Plex users here, welcome back to another video. I've got an absolute slab. I hope you enjoy this video. See if I can't get a load more. Look at that fish. Cracker. So um, today we got the Ryoga and Kendo combination. Got on Texas rig, peg Texas, um, peg Texas rig. I'm gonna throw a craw, a craw on that and give it a cast. Now that is a yummy Texas rig. So I got a new, um, I got a neck mount for a GoPro. Get it a bit closer to my face, so um, audio should be a little bit better. And I am fishing eight pound fluorocarbon straight through today as well. I'm back to the fluorocarbon. The river is still up really high, but the colours dropped out of it quite a bit, which is good. Yes, I thought that was a fish. What, is that a chub? That's a big chub. <laughs> oh, quality. <laughs> oh, what about that? It's like, third or so cast? He picked it up static off the bottom. I tend to find um, the chub do that often in the winter. You'll get them static on the bottom and um, kind of in a spot where you think a perch would be and you sort of mistake them a little bit. So here's a good look at that chub. That creature bait in there. <laughs> Cracker. Well, that was successful. <laughs> well, happy about that. That fish was just on this um, on the current again. Whereas that fish was a bit more a bit more in the current than on the edge, if that makes any sense. What I'm doing is casting into the current, then it gets to the bottom and then just dragging it into the slack. I'm more than likely thinking that chub was sat just in the slack and you see the lure coming across the bottom and snuck up to it. <laughs> no, 
Ja. Subscribe. Hey. 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 So um, in the winter, well, yeah, in the winter when I'm trying to fish slow, um, to force myself, I do a lot of uh, one hand fishing or one hand retrieving, just because when I when I got my hand on that reel, I always seem to bring in a bit more line, constantly reeling, force myself. I just tap the back of the um real handle or you can um just use the drag star to edge it in it really helps me um keep in contact with the bottom a bit more and just fish generally a bit slower when we're in these real cold flooded conditions also you can put your other hand in your pocket to keep it warm <laughs> I've got the bike with me today, so I can um, zoom around and just fish these few slack spots I, I'm finding. Should make me a bit more productive. There's a tree there. There's um, slack on this side as well. I'll go over by the bike and I'll cast. Ooh. It's real shallow here, but you might find the fish pushed up in here because of these conditions. Maybe, maybe today's the day when there's a fish down here. So I'm just working my way down the river. And there's a nice crease here. Got flow that way and then flow to the right coming out of the um this little stream and go triangle slack of water might be a fish hiding here hopefully a perch oh my god that was massive. I think it must have been a pike. <laughs> I should have set the hook, but <laughs> I should have sort of drove the hook home. But where well, I thought that might have been a pike. I didn't want to lean into it too much. Could have bit me off. Ah, that's definitely what that was. You might hit it again, you never know. Just come down to um, one of the locks. I had my PB from here a long time ago. <sighs> oh, it's about, I know 10 foot deep here, maybe a bit less, eight, 10 foot, something like that. Where the river runs in flood, goes down that way off the, um, the weir. It creates a real tight eddy here, and you've only got a small, small bit of slack water in front of the lock gates. Sometimes really compacting them fish. They're either in there or they're off somewhere else. I 
but I have a few casts. A few casts in that slack a bit. I'm in the current, casting into the slack and bringing the lure back into the head of the current. Try get, just try to get tight to that wall. Just a lure drops down that vertical structure. Perch always love a bit of um, vertical structure. Sometimes they hang on the side of it. I notice it more in the summer, but I don't know if that's just because it's clear and um, I see more fish, if you know what I mean. But always worth a go real tight up against the walls. Let's have a cast on a bit, it's got a bit more flow. Just tight to them wooden, wooden, um, Post to go down to the bottom. You'll get a load of um, sticks and brush get mingled in, sort of mixed in amongst them posts at the bottom where when the river's in real flood, pushes all the debris and it'll get caught there and sink to the bottom. So that'll be a nice bit of structure down there. There's someone in the middle. Got a flood cast. Yeah, I feel, feel a load of branches down there. One on that right hand side. And one more cast here and then keep moving because I'm trying to, I'm fishing, pre presenting the lure slowly, but trying to fish as many spots as I can because, well, the places I'm finding fish, I'm, Oh, that was a fish! Yeah, oh, idiot. Oh, I was going to say, the places I'm finding fish, they're normally within the first sort of few casts. But that was a bite. I thought it was, felt like there was some leaves or something on some weed on the lure. So I was just lifting a rod up because I could feel the weight, not thinking it was a fish. Otherwise, I would have set the hook. <laughs> it's a good sign. The other, the other good thing is, because I didn't set the hook, um, the fish shouldn't be spooked, because I haven't, I, I haven't um, put the hook point in its mouth, so hopefully it should take again. Well, that was a typical perch bite. Oh, what was that? It's like a plug. Oh, I could have been a fish. I'm being a bit too ginger. That might have been a fish as well. I'm being a bit timid on the hook setting because I hate getting, I hate um, setting the hook on something on the bottom. Nobody likes losing to us. That was definitely not a fish. You get one tight to the bank. What I'll do is, because I've had a few bites there, I'll just have a few more casts this, at this angle, and then if I don't get any follow-up bites, I'll, I'll go to the complete other side of the swim spot, and then fish, fish um, back at the fish. Sometimes when you miss a couple of bites, changing the angle of the lure, being dragged along the bottom, will encourage them fish to bite again.
Yeah. Why does this feel like a pot? Oh my god! Oh my god! That's a big perch. That is a very, 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 very big perch. Oh my god! They're still in here. What about that? Wow! I haven't got my scales with me. Ah, persistence! Oh my god! Look at that fish! I'm just gonna tire her out. I can see that hook nicely through the the nose. Oh my, what a chunk, man. That is a big winter perch. That could even be a four. Could even be more, you know. The frame on that fish is massive. Oh my God, let's get a big camera. I haven't had a big Thames donkey like that for a while. Look at that fish. Absolute beaut. She's got the old curl on. Just turn her around so you get a better look at her. Like, what about that? <laughs> yes, that is her. Absolute massive Thames perch. Look at that fish. Look at it. <sighs> Creature bait's killing it. Wow, after all that excitement, I'm, I'm um, pooped, but I'll just run through what I'm doing, casting out to the, there's an ice, there's an edge of ice just tight to the lock gate, so I'm casting out just to the back of that, and, oh no, no. I might just miss the fish again. God's sake. What? Yeah, what I was going to say is I was waiting for it to hit the bottom, letting it drop on a complete slack line, which could be a downfall there, because that could have been a fish and I didn't feel the bite. But I'm just fishing it slightly a bit more aggressive. Well, that fish hit when I was fishing it a bit more aggressive, just popping it off the bottom, maybe like a couple, few inches, just popping it, just sort of bouncing it, darting it, and that fish hit just as it was plopping back down to the bottom. It, it, it hit it hard as well. Still gonna work my way up to, um, work my way up there and start casting backwards on myself. I, I'm so excited. I'm so, so excited. I was, um, saying earlier, I haven't, I haven't, oh, I don't know if it's a fish or not. Um, I haven't caught a big perch here since, well, I think it was four years ago, maybe five years ago. Like, I'm talking a big specimen perch. And I had um, I had my first four pounder here. And um, I'm pretty sure that was a, if that weren't a four, it was very close to it. But, you know. I don't, I don't care about their weights at all. I just like, like being in the presence of the fish. That fish had a massive frame as well, like just a giant frame. Didn't, didn't have much in his belly. It was quite hollow, but it's healthy. It wasn't skinny. 
Oh, I'm so made up about that. Yeah. What? That's a dinky one. That was such a strange bite. <laughs> you don't normally find them this size and then that size of the one I just had. But good thing about this creature, but it's big, but it's small. Still, a small fish can get it in its mouth quite happily. Like you can see, it's gone. And um, yeah, the big fish like it too. Pull it out. That was a little perch. <laughs> I just had a, I just had a really big one out of here. Healthier, how big? It's about around the four pound mark. Yeah. It's a, it's a cracking fish for the river. Oh. Uh, you missed it, man. <laughs> I, I, normally I'd say you never know, there might be a few more down there that size, but with a fish like that, I don't think so. No. It's well up, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're great they're great fun like all i do is lure fish like all day every day um it's great fun I... oh, i'm shaking oh, i'm not shaking i've got chills oh man makes just a day like today just makes makes the struggle worth it. And I'm doing well. The last few years, I pretty quick into the season I have a big specimen fish. Like I'm I'm glad of that and that's I think gonna be my biggest biggest perch um of the year. I'll just put on a big Senko. Just to see if I can't coax a bigger fish before I move. I've got a small hook on here, so if I have a bite, I'm really gonna really gonna need to lean into it hard. Make sure the drag set tight, nice and tight. I'm just having a few casts on the downstream side. Got the creature bait back on. Got quite an expansive um, sort of slack of water here, so gives the fish more options. I'm doing the same as before, just dragging that, dragging the creature bait. Every now and then I'll give it a couple of pops, pop it off the bottom a little couple of inches, let it hit the bottom again and then where I get for some distance. It's a cold day, but that sun's really warm. You gotta love the um the winter, the winter sun. You get nice and cold in the day, and that sun really warms you up. I do think all the f most of the fish will be in the um in the lock from the downstream side because you've got the sluice sluices are open, the so gates at the bottom of the lock. And the fish, when it's flooded, they just swim through there, just get straight into that clam water, and there'll be a ton of bait fish in there. There's always, always a ton of bait fish in the locks. Normally, big shoals of roach. And perch would be in there munching on that. I would sneak in there, but the lock keeper, the lock keeper's here, and he's let he's letting me um, fish off here where, you know, he could tell me to bugger off. So I don't want to upset him, and it's frozen. There's something big stuck in the water over there. I'm really curious as to what it is. <laughs> Looks like a rhino. But well, I don't think we have them here. <laughs> I can't help it. I thought he's got a sneaker cast in the lock. I'm addicted. <laughs> so before I go, I'll have a few more casts on where I had that fish. Just if there's a shoulder fish down there, um, give them time to rest. Bumping stuff on the bottom, which I didn't bump earlier. So they, I might be fish. Not grabbing the lure that I'm just sort of bumping into. Oh. 
got a little bit of slack here between the two current edges. I um, this is a good old place from my childhood. I grew up in one of them houses back there. So I used to spend every waking moment on this bit of river. Gotta love it. I miss this place, I think. About the only place I will miss. Well, I was thinking maybe just along this edge you might find a perch. Oh, bottom. That's quite a considerable bit of slack out there, actually. I was hoping the um, cut was going to be slack. So normally, when they've got the weirs open, you'll, you'll find it slack, but because there's so much water, it's not slack. <laughs> got flat tyre. I think I've got a pump on my boat somewhere there. Yes, the boat come to rescue. I had a pump. Not a very good one, but it's putting air in the diet. I'm back here. Literally just for a few casts, just because I'm coming past. Just to see if there's fish sat in here again. Always worth it when you passing up spots you've got fish on. Oh no! Well, that's the reason why. That was a nice fish there. I don't think that fish will hit again. It's alive. I hope you don't have to go back upstream later. Why not? Good old workout, I suppose. The torches? Yeah, fair enough. Well, I think that's all she wrote. Um, I'm off home now. Absolute blinding session. Hope you enjoyed the video and um, give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Cheers.